Hello, and welcome to another edition of Rail Rangers on the Road. The Midwest Rail Rangers, our 501c3 nonprofit organization, presents onboard educational programs across the Midwest. You may have caught us on the South Shoreline between Chicago and South Bend, Indiana, aboard the Sky Parlor car at the Wisconsin Great Northern, on an Amtrak charter organized by the 20th Century Railroad Club of Chicago, on private rail excursions featuring heritage equipment, and at various outreach events such as Train Fest and Mad City Rail. In March of 2020, the coronavirus sidelined most of our programs. After taking a few months off, we returned with virtual programs, taking you to exciting rail destinations across Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, and Wisconsin. With 2021 now here, we hope to begin the transition back to doing in-person programs. During the months ahead, though, we will continue to bring you new virtual programs as well. So sit back and relax and enjoy another edition of Rail Rangers on the Road. Well, hello everybody and welcome to another one of our Rail Ranger virtual programs. Uh, we are with you today. It's just after 7 p.m. here on Sunday, October the 17th, 2021. Thanks for joining us. Um, and this will kick off a special uh, two-part series that we're going to do. Our first part of our series is uh, today, October the 17th. And the second part of this series will run in a couple weeks from now on Sunday, November the 7th, 2021. And we are going to take you on a ride on the California Zephyr. Over 2,150 miles, in fact, between Emeryville, California, and Ottumwa, Iowa. So we are going to flip the camera around. I'm going to give you a tour. We are in Emeryville, California. Uh, so it's actually just after 5 o'clock Pacific time here. 7 o'clock for you folks back, all the way back in the Midwest. Uh, let me flip the camera around and give you a quick tour of the station and uh, tell you a little bit more about the California Zephyr uh, before we get underway on our journey here in just a few minutes. The train's about to leave, but I'm going to give you a quick tour around the uh, Emeryville Depot where the uh, California Zephyr uh, starts out its journey. So let's flip the camera around, take a look at the station. And there we go. This is where all the magic, all the magic starts. This is the Emeryville, California uh, station for Amtrak. This is the starting point for the uh, California Zephyr train. Now, one thing that's interesting, um, even going back to the early days, 1940s and whatnot, um, the trains would always stop in uh, the East Bay because there was never, um, if we could put up a map maybe here of uh, San Francisco and show you exactly where Emeryville is in relation to downtown San Francisco. But as you can see, there was uh, no train service back in the day. Um, no tracks were actually ever built across the bay from uh, Oakland and Emeryville over to uh, the city of San Francisco proper. It could go down to uh, San Jose and then back up to San Francisco but all the uh, trains from Chicago including the original California Zephyr uh, back in the days would end either in Oakland or somewhere here in the East Bay and people even back in the 40s and 50s do what they do today and they would board a uh, bus as you can see here um, that would bring them across what is now the Bay Bridge and takes them into um, San Francisco proper. So if you really are taking the train from Chicago um, all the way to uh, San Francisco, the city itself, 
uh, you'll get off here in Emeryville. Um, likewise, if you're doing our, our, our eastbound journey, um, you will start on one of these buses in San Francisco. And we'll walk around here. So you will board one of the Amtrak buses that you see here in downtown San Francisco. And they will give you a ride across what is now the Bay Bridge. And they will take you to downtown San Francisco or from downtown San Francisco uh, all the way to across the Bay Bridge. I don't know. It's a 20 or 30 minute ride depending on um, what the traffic is like. Um, and again, that's all because uh, railroad tracks were uh, never built across San Francisco Bay proper. And so even in the 1940s or 1950s, if you took the California Zephyr, you would get off and, and board a bus. So these folks are uh, getting on this train and heading to uh, across the Bay Bridge. So that's really where your journey starts if you are going to really do the journey from downtown San Francisco. Um, the first 30 minutes or so will be a bus from San Francisco downtown to Emeryville. So we'll leave these folks here and we'll rock around here and show you a little bit of the, of the station. So there is the uh, Emeryville Amtrak station. And so if you notice the bus, I forgot to mention, it says San Joaquin's and California Capital Corridor. That's because most of the connections here are not really the long distance trains. Uh, they are the um, San Joaquin's, which come up from Bakersfield and Sacramento. So that's why the bus says that. And um, of course, besides the San Joaquin's, the station is also used by Amtrak's Coast Starlight, which runs between uh, Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, the Bay Area here, um, and then up to uh, Klamath Falls in Portland, Eugene, uh, Seattle, Tacoma, and of course the California Zephyr, which will be arriving here in just a few minutes, uh, and we will be on underway for our journey. So this is the uh, very busy Emeryville station. As you can see, <coughs> Emeryville, San Francisco connection, because like we mentioned, you have to take the bus. Um, so you kind of wonder why Emeryville for a major long distance train. And again, the reason I, we showed you the bridge. Now, the, for a while, a long time, the California Zephyr would uh, go on to Oakland and that is this direction. Um, this direction is Chicago. 2,400 some miles that way. Where probably a lot of you are watching this evening. And then this way is Oakland, California. And um, the train yards are actually between Oakland and Emeryville. So if you picture Oakland over here, let's say... And the train yards are kind of here. And so if for the California Zephyr to go all the way to Oakland, Jack London, which it certainly could do using these tracks, um, it would actually have to go past the train yards where Amtrak has its facilities uh, and then reverse course. And for a while, Amtrak did that, but um, it was kind of a kind of ended up being a pain to overshoot the yards, go to Oakland, Jack London and then back into their yards, and there's a Y there, uh, and it just really tied up the line. Um, so since 1997, at least, uh, the California Zephyr has uh, terminated oh, here. In so I wanted to mention one other thing while we're on the back side, while we're still waiting for the, for the train to come, uh, and we're here in, in um, Emeryville, is this hotel, and it's a little pricey in my opinion, but if you are a train watcher, this is the place to go. Uh, this is the uh, Hyatt house. And as you can see, they have balconies that overlook the train tracks. So if you're looking for a destination, maybe you don't want to go into San Francisco proper, or you just want a hotel that's close to the end of the California Zephyr line, well, this doesn't get much closer. So this is the, uh, as you can see, the Hyatt house. And I've had friends who have stayed here. I've not actually stayed here myself. 
Um, but I have had friends who stayed here, uh, and they said that you can actually call and request one of the uh, rooms on the train station side, and you can sit on your balcony, and you can certainly watch all of your... Um, all of the train watching activity that is um, going on here. Um, well, so, def so definitely check out the uh, the Hyatt House Hotel, and this is kind of cool too. They have a uh, walk over uh, to the other side as well. So let's let's go check it out before our train arrives. We have a little bit of time, just a little bit of time. Um, so let's go check it out and give you a, a view here of the trains. Well, like I said, we're, we're doing just a little bit where we're going to take you up and just show you the, the overview real quick of the station. They have stairs too, I guess, if you're feeling so inclined, but I know we're live with you here, uh, and so we'll take you out real quick and kind of, and kind of show you and kind of show you the overview. Again, Oakland is this way. There's the Emeryville station. We just, we started our program there and we walked around. I showed you the bus, showed you the hotel and there's the announcement. Sounds like our train will be arriving shortly. So Chicago, you are, yeah, 2,438 miles that way. And I don't know, I wanted to take you here. The reason really I wanted to take you up here is you can see the bay. You see the fog and the hills on the other side there? That is San Francisco proper. And all the fog you see there is across the San Francisco Bay. Um, and that is San Francisco proper. And then, the, the, of course, you take the Bay Bridge across. But I at least wanted to take you up here so you could see San Francisco uh, proper. And so this does cross the tracks. And again, there's a nice hotel and kind of residential neighborhood here. Yeah, sunset. Uh, there you go. Um, you can see some of the hills looking out as you cross, uh, head, that is uh, off to the east, and that is off to the west. So, uh, kind of a nice residential neighborhood here. Folks are getting their stuff together, and I think it's we should probably get our stuff together, because they're going to be pulling the train out here pretty soon. As we head back down, just a quick history. Um, this we're, we're going to be traversing the route uh, of the California Zephyr, and what we'll be doing doing is this was originally run by three trains, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy between um, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy between uh, Denver, Chicago, and Denver, and then the Rio Grande, of course, between uh, Denver and Salt Lake City, and then finally onto the Western Pacific. So we're going to be riding train number six, the uh, eastbound California Zephyr today, which will be arriving shortly. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you tape recorded bits of our journey. Obviously, we're not going to do the whole journey live for you because uh, that would take 48 hours, pretty just shy of 48 hours. We'll be on the train. So what we're going to be doing is just kind of showing you the highlights of the um, of the train and I believe that is our train coming in so we'll go ahead and watch it pull in and that is our train pulling in um, but anyway while it pulls in I'm going to show you the uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna sh uh, basically do a two-part program, as I mentioned. Um, uh, so we're gonna show you some highlights today of our eastbound journey, and then what we're gonna do is show you 
we're going to continue on with the second part of our program on November the 7th. Um, so, which is, uh, which is three weeks from today. So, we're going to tape all these bits as we ride the train to Ottumwa, Iowa. And we'll, show you, we'll share some interesting uh, tidbits with you, some history, some of the route highlights and things like that uh, along the way. And this, was a, this idea was actually sent to us by uh, one of our viewers um, who've been watching our programs over the last year and a half. And they've suggested that, um, why don't you do an Amtrak ride and take us along? So we'll show you, we have a big bedroom, one of the deluxe bedrooms reserved. And uh, by the way, this train would have came in yesterday and spends the night in the Oakland yard. So that is our, that is our train for our journey. I'm so excited we get to ride this 2,000, over 2,150 miles. That's our sleeping car there. 32019, looks like we'll be right against the dining car. That is, there's a lounge car. 33008. And uh, yeah, well we better go get our stuff and we are gonna we better get our stuff together when we go in the station I bet we'll find Candace in here oh and there she is hello hello everyone how are you I'm getting ready to get on that train to California Zephyr I was just telling them about that all right so we got to get all our bags we have way too much bags uh, so we better get our bags and head on out All right, do you think we have enough stuff? Maybe not. Maybe not. So we are headed to the 631 sleeping car. We have the coach on the back. Are you excited or what? You're quiet. Excited. Yeah? I can't jump up and down and wave my arms. Okay. So we're in the 631 sleeper. So the coaches are at the back. And the sleeping cars are up front. 631 sleeper. Thanks. Candace is way ahead of us. Wait for us, Candace. So what does that sign say? It says Emeryville San Francisco Connections. All right, let's go. Well, have you ever rode that Zephyr before? I think once. Once? Once, yeah. So we got a lounge car couple coaches behind us. Candace's favorite, the dining car. Yes, you gonna go for your steak dinner? Sure. All right.
Alright, thank you. Get a little extra help from her. Oh, already working. Okay. Oh, thank you. You, you want your bag with you, or do you want to have it over here? Oh, we'll take it upstairs. Take it upstairs. Yeah. And I'll sort through stuff later. <laughs> and what was your name? What's Sorry. Sorry. Robert and Candace, nice to meet you. We're in our cubby. All right. So, what do you think? Well, take this off for a minute so I can breathe. Oh, yeah. So, this is our... And we'll give them a tour of this a little later. Yeah. So once this we get our, rolling. Our room. <sighs> Got a nice big couch area here. Yeah. Bed up here. Oh, oh okay. <sighs> All right, and then the bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom slash shower. All right. So, so we are, oh, we just barely made that train, didn't we? By the skin of our teeth. The skin of our teeth. I was so busy showing everybody what was uh, uh, out their window, telling them the history of the route and everything. And uh, I just started explaining because I, I showed them the bus and we took them up on the, up on the tower, and then we walked all around the station. So, what were you doing? You were sitting. In this... I was moving our lug luggage strategically to the door. Oh, okay. Because they closed off the section that I was sitting in, so I had oh, to move all of our bags. All of our bags. We do not travel lightly, by the way. No, we do not. With the with the rail well, ranger. Well, we started out with two two bags, roughly, but then. Yeah. Somehow we ended up with more. I, hear the, I heard the whistle. Did you hear the whistle? So I kind of explained to everybody, and you can elaborate a little bit more if you want, how we're going to be doing the program. Uh, today is Sunday, October the 17th, 2021. And then, oh, we're moving a little bit. We're, and, and we're officially we're off. off on our journey to Ottumwa, Iowa. But I explained to people how we're going to be doing this. We're going to, um, at some of the, the brake stops along the way, we're going to get off and kind of show them. I think Sacramento will be our first one. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to get off in Reno and Winnie Muckins and some of the service stops. We'll yeah. see. I might not get off. You might get off. Or you <laughs> just might get off by yourself. I might. Uh, so we're going to show them some of the... And then we're going to show them some of the route highlights. We're going to... Oh, that's uh, one of the San Joaquin trains coming in. That's, that's the southbound. Uh, one of the corridor trains. Well, I guess we're stopping for him. We're no, we're, no we're, we're still moving. We're just Optical illusions. Very slowly. There you go. So what we're going to do today is kind of show you some of those service stops uh, as we head east. But we're going to take people, of course, these segments will be, this uh, will be pre-recorded as we uh, go on. But uh, we're, we're going to do a two-parter where we're going to show people some of the um, route highlights. And when we go over Donner Pass, we're going to show them that. And we go over through the Rockies. That might be in the... That might be in the second part on November 7th, uh, three weeks from tonight. So we yeah. decided to break this up into two because it'd be, um, you know, in real time, this would be a 48-hour journey, or about 46 hours, I think, with yeah, the time change. Yeah, your phone might die by then. Yeah, and people, I don't think, are going to want to watch us straight for 40-some 40 oh, really hours. So um, we'll be back, and we'll show you some of the route highlights, and we're going to give you a... We'll give you a tour, a better tour of the big bedroom and kind of show you around and maybe show you the diner and the lounge car. So maybe some people have never been on an Amtrak trip or never have done the California Zephyr, which is... Well, come to the mirror so they can see you so they know oh. that I dressed you appropriately. Oh, yeah, no, they've seen the well, they've seen the oh. shirt. They've seen at least the top of the shirt back just uh, when we okay. were running around there. Um, yeah, look at that. Yay. Hi. Um, 
So what is your, uh, before we cut out, what is your um, favorite routes that we have done of scenery or Amtrak routes? I think I've only been on this train coming west once. We've never done this going east? No, so this is the first time going east. No kidding, really? For me. I didn't know that. I thought we've done this before going. Um, oh. So I'd say probably the chief coming into LA is, is pretty neat because you come over the pass there too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is going to be a beautiful ride, especially through the Rockies. I've heard there's supposed to be snow, possibly. Oosh, okay, yeah. Well, it's good it there uh, mm -hmm. this time of the year. And um, so you've done the Coast Starlight. You said that was one of your favorites. Yeah, so. that was pretty, going up along the ocean. That was that was beautiful scenery, especially back in the day when Amtrak had the parlor cars. But yeah. unfortunately, they don't have those anymore. But if you want to ride on one, Wisconsin Great Northern. Oh, boy, you're just going to squeeze that plug in there, aren't you? Uh, yeah. All right, yeah, so we go through kind of the, the um, we're going through some of the East Bay neighborhoods here. So this is uh, Emeryville, and then we'll be in Berkeley shortly, and uh, Richmond, California. So not really spectacular scenery or anything, so we'll, we're going to we're gonna cut out, and uh, we'll join you at some point And where, later. where are we getting our route guide information from? Oh, well, we'll tell them that a little later. Okay. And where they can, where they can buy, if they're going to take a trip on any Amtrak long-distance train, including the California Zephyr, we'll tell you a cool spot. Um, that's a good point, where you can buy your route guides, and you can also, um, you can also support the Midwest Rail Rangers um, by purchasing a route guide as well, because they no longer have the route guides. Remember, they used to have them stuck mm -hmm. over here, not so much. They don't give you the free route guides, so you got to... You got to bring your own flexible dining. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Anyway, we'll talk more about that too, the dining car and what's going on and uh, route guides and all that. But uh, let's go ahead and get settled into our room, and we'll see. You, we'll see you maybe just a little bit further down the line. See you in a little bit. All right. Thank you. 
Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Sacramento, California. Yep, there you go, Sacramento. We're aboard the California Zephyr, taking you to Otumawa, Iowa. Here's some of my fun facts. It is the capital city of California. It was a booming town during the gold rush, and it was the end of the Pony Express and the Transcontinental Railroad. Yes. We're going to walk down just a little ways, and okay. then Robert's going to tell you more about yeah. the railroad. Well, I'll do that while we while we walk down. We're going to, yeah, this is about a 15 minute place to stretch your legs, and on this journey, we're actually ahead of schedule. So it'll give us a chance to walk down and uh, see the engine. Candace mentioned that uh, this was the end of the Transcontinental Railroad. And uh, what's interesting about that is uh, Stanford University, which is in the Bay Area, is actually the place where they have the Golden Spike. And that's because Leland Stanford drove the Golden Spike. Uh, and it is at Stanford University in one of their uh, galleries. So if you want to see the Golden Spike, it's nowhere along the route except for the, uh, not at the National Park in Utah. It is actually in Stanford University. So there you go, California Zephyr. Are we going to walk up to the engine? We're going to try. Oh, all right. Near up there? Potentially. Ah, maybe maybe you'll give me a cab ride. Uh, I doubt it. No. Oh. Uh, Hi. Hi. That's the engine. All right. Probably the newest car on the train, just made about five years ago, the Viewliner baggage cars. And there's the transition sleeper. Of course, all the Superliners were built in the late 70s into the 1980s or so. And this is a transition sleeper because it goes from single level where the baggage car is. Up high. Double. Up to high. And you can tell all those numbers start with the three... 9 series. Z39. Ah. And it transitions up here versus on that end, it's the lower level, which lets them get into the baggage car. And here's one of our sleeping cars. So we have two on today's train. And we'll give you a tour of that a little bit later. Candace will show you around the room. Yeah. So this is a 632 car. And uh, it has uh, five of the big bedrooms and uh, ten on the upper level and four on the lower level roomettes, the smaller rooms and the family bedroom and all that. And then this is our 32019. That is our sleeping car right there. Right. So, there's a little bit of uh, downtown Sacramento we'll show you. 
some of the buildings. And of course, Sacramento is home of the uh, California State Railroad Museum. If you, it's one of the foremost uh, railroad museums in the country, if you've never been. And uh, the Capitol Corridor trains, the same trains basically that from uh, Emeryville to Sacramento, the same trains uh, go on this route. So the Coast Starlight, just past here, the Coast Starlight breaks off uh, and goes north to Klamath Falls and, and Redding and then the uh, then the corridor trains break and go south to Bakersfield so this is kind of the last station that's served by the co also the Coast Starlight and the uh, Capital Corridor trains which are just on the other side of us What do you think of the ride so far? We've only been on a couple hours. So far it's been great. It's comfortable, relaxing. You can, you can do exercises, around. I guess. Yeah. Look at that. I guess keep your exercises going on the train. In your pajama pants. So, oh, last call. Well, I guess we'll go back to the room and, I guess what, we'll see the folks when they, we're going to go up the, uh, up the Sierra, so we'll tell them a little bit about the Gold Rush, which you mentioned, a little bit of Gold Rush. Correct. Donner Pass is ahead, so we're going to start climbing up into the mountains, and um, we'll, we'll tell everybody a little bit more about our journey as we go up to the mountains. All right, see you soon. So they're done with their work in this in that stretch. Oh, no, it's just now uh, it's uh, going from the single track to the double. Oh. I don't know if they're still working one of these other tracks or not. They might be. Well, you might be working the two tracks, but we're on the one track now. Coming up on a little place called Cisco. Cisco was the end of the track in 1864 when they were building the railroad. End of track. Now. Smoke? Smoke. <laughs> yeah. You see up there, uh, if you look really high up there, there's like a radio tower. Do you see that to your right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and if you look over to the left of the radio tower, there's a small cabin that used to be I see it. the lookout. And that was, see where it? They, mm -hmm. that was where they would look out to wash their fires along all the snowsheds. They were all wooden snowsheds. This whole thing was wooden snowsheds. Back in the day. And that was railroad? Yeah. The railroad was? And that, that lookout would look out up there and uh, they would uh, observe if something was on fire and uh, somehow be able to uh, you know, get the word out that the fire train would come out. I met friends huh. that had gone up there. It's about an hour's drive on all the weird roads up there to get up there. You know? So you don't have to hike? You could. You could hike it, I guess, too. But you could drive up to it. Yeah, it's called Red Mountain. This is the location of Cisco Grove off the highway. And then, like I said, the old railroad location of just Cisco is up here, around the left hand curve. Actually, left to right, not left to right, Cisco. Snowshoeing a lot of this area years ago. I haven't done it for a long time. Uh, the brewery is on um, 
on this route. And she said the Southwest Chief. I said, well, they run together till Galesburg. Oh, I see. What you're saying. With the the I route. To Chicago, right? Chicago. Oh, much in yeah. yeah, like like ten miles out within ten miles of Union nice. Station. Yeah. I gotta check that out. So I didn't know. Yeah, you'll see it right on this side. Okay. Going. Yeah. Well, That's Donner Lake. Good shot of it coming up here pretty soon. It's going to be wide open for you. Yeah, oh wow. We'll get a lot more chances. I'll show you if the, if the spot where there's an eagle's nest. We'll see what happens. Well, she likes the eagles and the animals. Yeah, and... Yeah, get on the <laughs> That's okay. Get over there. I told you I switched with you. Yeah. Jet 47 is coming right up. That's uh, where the double track begins again. For six feet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're stretched out. Very good. Mm -hmm. And when's our steak dinner coming? Oh, all right. <laughs> Next to never. Yeah. Oh, I feel for you guys. I really do. I <laughs> said, I asked like, That's what I was, I was hoping for. I was like, oh, I really want a steak. Yeah. <laughs> I could, if I could go down there and tell that chef to whip up something, I would. I told the... Uh, I said, I thought they at least have the hamburger, the microwave hamburgers. Yeah, he gosh. says that's gone. I said, he goes, order the uh, order the uh, the pasta yeah. with the meatballs, and uh, take the meatballs out. I'll give you a couple of rolls, and you can make a. I'm like, oh my god. Oh please. It was decent though. It was. I did it. It was. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm so like. Let's see some other invention. I know I had some really good, we have a place called BJ's Brewery, and I ordered to go last night, and I ordered uh, uh, some tri-tip with shrimp scampi. Oh, my ah. And so to, to make it to go, they just put it in this plastic container, but the shrimp scampi was just in this melted butter. It was so good. <laughs> just pulled it out of pure butter. That's really bad for you, but it was really good. That's been so weird around the Midwest traveling. I mean, we've been mostly just doing car trips and yeah. a lot of research for the book. It's going to be about 400 pages when it's done, the book. Right there, Eagle's Nest. Yeah, Eagle's Nest. And there's an the eagle over there, too. See the eagle? Where? Yes, where? Right there. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there he is. Yep. yep. Or she. Yeah, she. Yep. I know. Is that wild? See, actually, you probably want another set if you were. No. Well, I, I think it's Well, you wouldn't be looking out. You'd be napping. You'd be napping about now. No. Yeah. I want to go on the Chichi Cab ride. You'd never get that again. As a kid, I would. Yeah, as a kid. I was up there all the time. It wasn't, it wasn't, even, it wasn't even a big deal. It was, you pestered them until they let you up there? No, they take a lot of kids up there. Well, hello everyone. We made it across the Sierras. We're here in Reno, Nevada. It's the biggest little city in Nevada. It was also, the, it is the second largest metro area in the state. And it is one of the, it was a prominent city between Sacramento and Salt Lake on the Transcontinental Railroad. So we're in the trench. This is called the Reno Trench. And, uh, have you ever seen the show Reno 911? I have. Yes, this is notorious because of weed being legal in California and not in Nevada and not in Nevada you have the Reno 911 dogs who meet all the trains well let's take a walk <laughs> down the train just a little bit we're going to show you the observation car from the outside and we mentioned the Reno trench because the it used to be at grade level and when the trains would stop here it's a crew change point they would actually block a lot of the city streets. So maybe 10 or 20 years ago, they built this trench, and it's called the Reno Trench, and that's why we're down uh, in this uh, lower area, so we don't block all the city streets that are above us, as you see some of the casinos and stuff. 
So that's the Reno Trench. You want to show people the outside of the observation car? Yeah, let's take a walk just a, just a little ways back There's here. the diner, which we walked by earlier. We had a good, uh, we had a good lunch. Yeah, it was good. I uh, had chicken fettuccine. And we have dinner coming up in a little bit. Where we spent uh, some time this afternoon checking things out. The big windows, a lot of people enjoy looking out. You can see there used to be a window here that they covered up for some reason. Not quite sure why. Did you know that there was originally a piano when these were built in the 70s and early 80s? They had a piano bar downstairs. That's really cool. Yeah. And then we have our two coach cars at the end of the train. Maybe we'll walk through tomorrow. Yeah, we can do that tomorrow. We need to show people tomorrow. We'll walk through Not tomorrow. really tomorrow for everybody viewing at home, but taping tomorrow. Tomorrow for us. Yeah, so how does it feel? We're out of California. Nice and warm. All right, Reno, the biggest little city. We'll walk back up here. So it's a crew change point. The crew who started with us in, um, in uh, they actually got on in Oakland, but we got on in Emeryville where the train started. And the next, they will run through about three or four hours to, uh, Winnie Bucca, Nevada will be the next crew change point from there. So you see the conductors here and the Engineer. engineers getting off the train. Gonna, they're gonna go. Hi, Mark. We'll see ya. Bye. All right. Nice to see ya. Absolutely. Did we get this some rest? This is our crew room here. Oh, that's garage. it right there, garage. <laughs> yeah, nice. how about that? This is the 40 mile desert between Reno and Winnemucca.
right, everyone. Welcome to Winnemucca, Nevada. Oh, Winnemucca. Winnemucca. Wow. So what does is, what is Winnemucca mean? Well, in Native American, it means one moccasin. Those aren't moccasins. Those are hiking shoes. Well, close enough. Oh, okay. Um, another fun fact, it's the home of the Buckaroo Hall of Fame. What's a buckaroo? Maybe kind of like a cowboy. Okay. And also, a fun fact. Yes. It has a red light district called the Line. Can we can we go visit that? Where's the? No, we have where, to stay with the train. We I can't wanna... wander from the platform. You okay. must listen for the all aboard and the two toots of the whistle. Okay. So what do you think? This is uh, Rennie Mucka. And we can see the beautiful mountains. It's about sunset here on our first day. We're kind of wrapping up our first day. Uh, they're going to pull up the train. That's right. This is a So let's stop. walk over here. We'll show you the wonderful, the big station, which is actually bigger. They used to have a little bus shelter. The first time I took the California Zephyr, they took, um, there's the sign, Winnemucca. They used to just have a little bus shelter, like, Literally, maybe we could throw up a picture of it. And this is uh, actually relatively new. This is the first time I've seen this. Um, a nice brick uh, shelter. And the ADA, uh, they have a wheelchair lift in there for our wheelchair lift passengers. Very nice. And so I'm not sure why they're moving the train up. But they're going to coach passengers on and off okay oh the back yeah you can see the back, the back the so the coach oh I didn't back. notice that yeah I guess okay so they're going to the sleepers because we're up front we're allowed to get off so the coach passengers are gonna, we're gonna move the train up so the coach passengers can get off so we're the lucky sleeper passengers. So we'll get to see the train move up here a little bit. You want to walk up here a little bit? See what we got? Because eventually we're going to get back on up here. And a beautiful sunset against the train, by the way. It's pretty. And there's the new brick. Uh, I was really impressed by this. Amtrak's done a really nice job. I presume it's Amtrak. Maybe, but the maybe the local town. Well, we're moving the train up. Oh no, we're stuck in Winnie Mucka. <laughs> oh no. Wouldn't that be funny if it just kept going? No, they wouldn't let it go. Just keep going with that. Yeah, they would. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. Oh. Uh, well, there's some of the locals. Even at the train. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. All right. I'm kind of curious about this sign, though. I'm kind of wondering about that sign. Look how Winnie Mucka's. I wonder if they misspelled it on the original sign. Maybe. They had to redo it. So. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think they did. W. They misspelled the sign. Oops. Same on here. Right, so I show people where we are on the map. So we got on this morning in the San Francisco Bay Area. And so far we traveled with you through Sacramento where we got off a little bit ago. And Reno. And now we are Winnemucca. Winnemucca. And then we're, what we're going to do is get off the... We're going to get back on the train. Have some dinner. Candace is going to show you our sleeping car accommodations that's right and then overnight we're gonna go through elko really there's not a lot of stops overnight elko and salt lake so this long stretch there's only one stop and then when we wake up tomorrow we should be in eastern utah crossing into grand junction all right well let's colorado go back aboard. you want to go back aboard yeah. well we got plenty of time Well, you can stay out here with them, because I'm getting a little chilly. Oh. So I'm going to go back aboard. You you keep them out here, all right?
Well, hello everyone. Welcome to room C. Ah, this is a this deluxe bedroom that's on the California Zephyr. And this is the daytime setup. You have a nice large couch to sit on. You can sit and just chill. Go to sleep, maybe. I mentioned this is the top accommodations that you can get on, on, Amtrak. on Amtrak's Western Long Distance Train. That so is the correct. Empire Builder, California Zephyr, Southwest Chief, Texas Eagle, Coast Starlight, the Capital Limited, the City of New Orleans. All the double-decker trains. That's this is true. the deluxe bedroom accommodations. Deluxe bedroom accommodations. So you have the big couch here that folds mm. out into a bed, okay. which we'll show you that a little bit later. Oh, all right. Then you have this handle that mysteriously yeah, we'll opens show the bed. The top bunk, down. which the we'll see you later. So you can kind of see that it's tilted. Yeah. There. Yeah. And it shows the whole length. This is back. So you have the window out here. So there's a hallway, but if you leave your curtain, you have a curtain. But if you leave it open, you can, see out. you can still see outside both windows, which is kind of cool. So the scenery is more on this side. You can still kind of see it from. So the great thing about the deluxe bedroom, which I absolutely love, I, I'd take it for myself if Robert would let me. Oh, <laughs> you want your own deluxe bedroom? Um, you All have right. a sink. Well, let me get on the other side of you to show them this you have the sink and this is so this is your private this accommodations your private by the way you're not sharing this with anybody you have your own sink mm -hmm. you have plenty of hand towels soap toilet paper yeah. kleenex hand towels it's kind of nice. all for your own use that's right not sharing not sharing with anybody you know and this doesn't like to share <laughs> the sleeping car intendant will keep this stocked for you usually okay. Um, you have a nice little area here that you can store a few things on. Yeah. Um, trash can, of course, you know, it's a small one. Yeah. But it's still there if you need it. And you have reading lights because you like to read, you like yeah. to read books when we're yeah. sometimes in the scenery. It's not, not so much on the California Zephyr because everywhere you go, the scenery is kind of cool. Sure. So yeah, it's just a touch light there. I, of course, I did disinfect them. Yes, yes. Um, this is the... The air and heat. Oh, okay. We'll okay, it's it. probably got it cranked up all the mm, way. We'll put it in the middle so Robert doesn't get too warm. And then over here is the... Another reading light controls the ceiling. Um, you have button. to call the attendant, so if you need something or there's an emergency, yeah. you can ring the attendant. This is kind of the new display. They put this... I'm not sure how long ago, maybe five, ten years ago, it replaced kind of an older dial system. Um, so it's now LED and touch buttons. They used to be different types of buttons, but as they refurbished the the cars over the years, they've upgraded the touch I mean, panels. The, the so. call button is a nice thing, but the the attendants, of course, have other things to do. They're making yes. beds, getting people's meals. So don't meal. constantly press the buttons. Yeah. Don't don't push their buttons. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so you have your own. What is this? Is this is room? this where this looks like something from Star Trek? Oh. Own restroom, own toilet facility. So you have your own toilet, yeah. But. Oh, what is that? You have your own shower. Oh. So you have your own shower. So you shower in the toilet capsule, for That's those who don't know. So, you would oh. shut the door. Oh, okay. Take your shower. Take your shower. Oh, all right. Don't do that. Yeah. Especially if you're Robert. Yeah, okay. So. And then there's, so you could probably, even though really for two people, you could probably fit four people, if I guess if you wanted on your couch. And, and then, then there's, there's a, nice a chair, which we have all our, all our, but you saw all our baggage at the beginning of this video yeah, when, so we, some left, of when we left Emeryville. And uh, there's a rack up here. I keep my computer up here. I'm downloading some of our videos, video, but, but, but they got a rack up here. You can put more bags up here. But this, so. here, this. Oh, what is that? This. Uh, mirror. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, wow. all yes, it is. I got some frizzy hair going on. So there's a door here. There's actually, this is a door. Okay. And so what is it for? Slides open. If you, if you have somebody in the next room that is family. So if we're traveling with, like, my friend Mike. Or your mom, or. And you want 
<laughs> privacy sometimes. You just pull the door shut. And during the day. You can open it up so you guys can visit. Okay. And gives you more space. And, and on the other room. side of this is another. Another room just like this. With its own toilet. And but it's opposite. So everything. Yeah, the is bench on the will be side. over on that side. So and so we have it closed. Here. Yeah. So since we don't know the person potentially that's going to be on the other side. I'll think of it as a, you know, people have seen that in hotel rooms, right? Yeah, you, it's like a suite at a, a hotel. A suite at a hotel where you can yeah. open up uh, the, doors, the, sh the jointed rooms. doors to the other side. So, yeah. so you can do that. So We're going to go to dinner. Oh. Um, are they going to join us or are they going to? No, we'll, we'll oh, let them, all right. you know, since the menu is kind of the same, we should yeah, yeah. what was for lunch, so. We'll, we'll maybe throw a snapshot of the menu up, you okay. know. Okay, right. But we're going to go to dinner, and when we come back, we'll show you what the bedroom looks like to go to bed. Okay, so yeah, that's one of the things the attendant knows when you're going to dinner, usually. Yeah. Or we, you can let them know. Say, yeah, hey, I've say, got hey, the well, 8 o'clock dinner, dinner. Make my bed up. Okay, and then when you come back from dinner... We'll show you what, what it's like. All right, so let's go to dinner. Well, hello everyone. We're back from dinner. We had the penny pasta and meatballs. We split it because we, we don't need a lot. Uh, so I ate both salads, of course. Uh, Robert ate most of the rolls. Um, but this okay. is the bedroom as it's made up for the evening. You got the top bunk up here. Oh. So Are you sleep? Good space here. You hook this little guy up in here. So you don't ah. fall out of the bed at night? Ah, it's like a restraint. So if, you, if you're a restless sleeper like Candace and you have Jimmy, Jimmy legs all the time. <laughs> well, that's why I'll sleep down here on the bottom. Oh, which is an even bigger bed. Kind of a big bed. Most Maybe two people can get two in? Two people could sleep here, you know. Apparently. Two skinny people. Yeah, so... Uh, so... So this is how it's made up. This is and how then you have a ladder. You got a ladder get, behind you. Yeah, show me. them the ladder. You Ooh. climb up the ladder. All right. To go get up on the top bunk. For yeah. the night? So, yeah, it's about, about 10 o'clock now on our first night on the eastbound California Zephyr. That's right. So, we well, hope you, you have enjoy. a little pouch up here. Yeah, you like, put your glasses. Your glasses, yeah. or if you want, you know, a book or something up there. And there's lights. We should show. So, if, <laughs> even if you're in the upper bunk and you want to read and not disturb the person below you, person below you, you even have a nice reading light. Look at that. Well, are you tired? I am. I'm gonna go hit the shower. Are we gonna Are we gonna see that? No, oh. you're not. <laughs> Sorry, boys. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm gonna hit the showers. We're gonna close out night two after after or night one. I'm sorry. After that, after yeah. I get out of the shower, we'll say good night. Um, join us for day two, but it's actually going to be November seventh. 2021 and we're going to take you on day two and three and three of our trip we'll start i guess tomorrow morning which will be actually november 7th when in three weeks when you turn in for our next program that's, that's november right. the 7th we will start out in the morning in uh utah i guess we're going to wake up in utah if everything we're goes as planned in utah and, and it's we'll going to be you. an hour ahead well gonna... yeah you're just confusing him now <laughs> Um, no, well, we on will train time, because yes, you, we okay. travel through time zones. So we will see you, our viewers of our Midwest Rail Rangers virtual program on the California Zephyr. We will see you at 7 p.m. Central Time on November the 7th. That's right. Three weeks from tonight. So. Uh, and we're, we'll take you across a little bit of Utah, all of Colorado, and then uh, into Nebraska, and then finally Iowa. And we'll wrap up our part two of the California Zephyr, uh, three weeks from tonight, November 7th, 2021. That's and right. uh, good night, everybody, and we'll see you uh, part two in three weeks from now. That's right. Good night. Bye. All right, everyone. Well, out of the shower. A little messy. Train rocking back and forth. A little water in the room, but that's okay. Um, this is the bed made up for the night. And I'm going to take my glasses off, and it's going to be lights out. So we'll see you tomorrow.